You can always count on Robin Williams to make you laugh. He's been doing it for more than 40 years and the jokes just keep coming. Now he's bringing his one-man show out to Australia. And as Ray Martin discovered, he's been swatting up for the trip. That's great news for fans, although maybe not so fabulous for Julia Gillard and Tony Abbott. But Robin, you're approaching 60, you, you look happy, you look comfortable, you look... Yeah, quieter, it's just a quieter life. with yourself? Yeah, I'm as, as peaceful as I can be as a 59-year-old comic, you know, it's pretty much <laughs> as peaceful as you can be as that whole thing, and yeah, it's much easier. Are you mellowing? Um, Does Robin Williams ever mellow? Aging like a nice Stilton. <laughs> <laughs> of mellow. Everybody is fair game. Even a couple of stints in rehab, plus recent heart surgery and divorce, haven't tamed his wild antics. In fact, he's turned his personal traumas into a new stage show called Weapons of Self-Destruction. Go, hey, sit on my face, I'll guess your weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Williams is bringing the award-winning show to Australia in November. And already it seems he's lining up some local targets. Look at her, look at how beautiful she looks. Look at this. And look at those lobes. Look at the lobes. My God, dangly, wonderful lobes. Not a lot of guys go, I want a girl with a pair of lobes. Long, bing, yes. This is a sign of great, the Chinese will go, this is a sign of great intelligence, that the long earlobe is a very blessed sign. And then there's Tony. Wearing He's in there, there's a Tony. So there's pictures of Tony. With these budgie smugglers. Budge, oh. Is that a compliment, really, <laughs> saying you're smuggling parakeets in your pants? Going, you'd want to say, like, now there's a parrot. Parrot smuggler? No, budgie. It's a parakeet. <laughs> Come on, boy. <laughs> there's a picture of him, and here's, here's Tony getting out of cold water. If you notice there, it's not... Look at that. That's, <laughs> that's pretty wild. The swimsuit competition, Tony's ahead by one. Earring competition, Julia leads. <laughs> That's the way, uh, 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 you like it, you like it, you want it, I got it. Williams is no stranger to Australia. Although the last time he was here, he was playing a penguin, lending his elastic voice to the mischievous Raymond in George Miller's animated movie, Happy Feet 2. I want to say something. I want to say one thing. Except for me, Torboy. You got the most charisma of anybody. Is that fun? Do you love it's a it? blast. Playing a little Argentinian penguin, it's great to be that guy, you know, and to be like, listen to me, I tell you something. I'm not afraid to say, it's not the size of the beak, it's how you use the pecker. <laughs> you see? Good luck with that joke. <laughs> Well, Alibaba had them 40 thieves, Sherry Zadi had a thousand tails. Accents have always been his thing. And after spending some time here, he mimics ours better than just about anybody else. Going, Without that nasal, Robin. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> what are you doing? No, no, no. Better, better, better. Meryl Streep had the best accent, I think, Australian accent to totally. you. Totally. Dingles ain't like my baby. That's right. Even the dingles are going, I believed her. <laughs> you know, it's very, uh, you know, as I... It is an interesting accent because you need, sometimes you get a... You, some, and people, that's New Zealand. Thank you there. <laughs> I think sometimes you have to take a little bit of an English accent and take a little bit of a, a southern accent. And you combine it and go, hi, oh, you know, Robert, go out there, you know, and then take a little bit, hi, y'all, and get, hi, good day, good day, move it on through. I don't know, it comes and goes. I'm, when I'm down there, I try it out and they go, who's that, Robin? <laughs> what voice is that? Get down. <laughs> I am Mark from Mark. Nanu Nanu. Williams first shot to fame in the hit 70s TV show Mork and Mint. But he'd already earned his comedy stripes doing high octane club stand ups. Uh, I think I have a malpractice suit here. <laughs> the comedy club circuit, live performances night after night, was fueled by a volatile cocktail of adrenaline, booze, and the pressure of pleasing a rowdy audience. I'm sure people at home will be smoking a joint going, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't do that. Don't do that on 60 Minutes, man. It's a hostile environment, you know, especially some clubs. I mean, some clubs are very sweet and kind, but it's that thing of you go out there and it's you against them, and then you have a choice of, will you survive once again, kill or die? It's gladiators with a mic. Is that the appeal? Yeah, it is a weird thing, and it helps your acting, it helps kind of everything. Have you ever walked off? No. You've gone the whole oh, full you go the distance. Yeah, yeah. You, you die. You, 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 you. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not leaving. 
I'm not done yet. It's like, cut me, Charlie. No, keep me in there. They're not going to win. And actually, they won. It's over. Get off. Good morning, Vietnam! Robin Williams set out to be a serious actor, and he graduated from New York's prestigious Juilliard School. But comedy made him a star. It ignited a career that stretched over more than 60 movies. You do Martha Graham, Martha Graham, Martha Graham. Of, of those movies, Robin, that have given us so much pleasure, what do you like? What, what are the most memorable for you of your movies? Is there one? Oh, I think Dead Poets. Yes. Just because it was so... It was the first time I ever did a movie that affected people more than a movie where people said it changed their lives and it went, I hope for the best. No, but Shakespeare can be different. Friends, Romans, countrymen. <laughs> Let me your ears. <laughs> you can also imagine maybe John Wayne is Macbeth going, well, is this a dagger I see before me? <laughs> After four Academy Award nominations, Williams the funny man finally realised his serious acting dreams with a role in Goodwill Hunting. If you ever disrespect my wife again. And the Oscar goes to Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting. The moment they say your name, it's like that weird thing of English leaves you. Because you start and then you start to walk and everything is like shh. shh, shh kiss everybody and then you look over and there's Jack in the sunglasses going way to go Robbo and it's all pretty wild oh man this might be the one time I'm speechless I remember thanking my dad because he was the one that said when I wanted to be an actor he said great just have a backup profession like welding <laughs> you would never ask your children to do things Things that children shouldn't do. What about the black ones? What about the serious, the dark ones? You know, it's the idea of you get to explore that behavior and, you know, look at that part of human behavior, which is dark and that, or even like in a movie like One Hour Photo, where you explore kind of damaged behavior of a guy who has no life except for other people's photographs. And that's kind of, it's fascinating. And that's the other side of, you know, the kind of the anthropological side of acting, which is wonderful. William's private life has had its own dark side. Living a life of success and excess in Hollywood have at times taken their toll. So, Robin, why don't you live in LA? This is the center of entertainment. I did. I lived here briefly when I did Mork and Mindy. And years ago, because if living here, everyone knows how you're doing in the business. I once dropped my car at a, a valet parking lot, and the guy said, sorry about your opening weekend. And this was the guy parking the car. So. His latest stay in rehab was just a few years ago. <laughs> once I was in rehab, I went, no, no, I'm back. It's great, because, you know, with alcohol, with the, with the heavy drinking, you have things called blackouts, which aren't really blackouts. It's more like sleepwalking with activities. And you wake up in a field with a road flare in your ass going, oh, not again. Do you wonder why people laugh at that? I mean, that's, that's so much of your comedy, the addiction and the, the cocaine. And the, why do people laugh? Because some of them have been through it. Some of them are laughing at, oh, you poor son of a bitch. And others are going, yeah, right, that's funny. You know, God, uh, cocaine's God's way of saying you're making too much money. Whoop, too late. But it's, um, it was interesting to be, go through all of that in uh, a couple of years and come out the other side and still be here, which is like, all right, Mel. Be safe. Be safe, Mel. Stay off the phones. Do you feel for Mel? I do. I just want to get him out of L.A. I want to say, come north with me. Come up to San Francisco. Shh. And don't take any phone calls. No phone calls. And Tiger. Oh, baby, don't text. Don't text. You can't be texting the girls. You may meet them, but don't text everybody, because the texts live on. Tweets and teats. Not good, my friend. Not good. We'll talk right then. 18 hoes. No, holes. Shut up. Mm, mm, mm. Too late now. You know that thing where you're going, hey, baby. Yeah, I got a, I got a love glove. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <yeah. laughs> I'll be right with you, honey. <laughs> Robin Williams' crazy stand-up shtick is a bit like his interviews. It's absolute comic anarchy, attacking anything from penises to politics. 
So brace yourself, he's coming to a playground near you. Oh, rugby. Oh, rugby for me is just amazing. The, the idea of you having a huddle where the other team shares. And you're basically, you're buried with your head in another man's ass going, where's the ball? Just stay here. We'll be right out in a moment. <laughs> and then Australian rules, footballs, anything goes. <laughs> Kick it through the goalpost, throw it, stuff it up a man's ass. Yes, it's all part of it. Run with the ball. Don't be afraid. I was watching going, what's going on? Shut up, Robin, have another beer. And then cricket. Wow, it's like baseball on peyote. What are you doing? Where's the field? <laughs> Everywhere. What are you doing? And then you rub the ball here to get it ready and going, are you allowed to do that? Yeah, just he's warming the ball up. No, he's not. He's getting off. What are you doing? <laughs> Can I give you the good news? The good news is the football will have finished. Oh, and then cricket started. Gonna, and cricket will have started. Oh, so we'll have something to talk about. <laughs> and then you have tennis where it's now that everyone's very vocal when they play tennis. It's like phone sex. You don't even have to see the game. Oh! Venus against Sharapova is just like, yo, girl, just play an extra set. <laughs> Need new balls? No, I'm fine. No, it's like, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, good luck. Thank you again. Thanks, boss. Great fun. Good luck. Thank you. See you in November, everybody. Good luck with the elections. Julia. I just had this horrible, morbid feeling. It was the massive hit. Virtually collapsed. Jimmy Barnes didn't see coming. Said to Jane, I don't think I'm going to make it this time. He said, I think I'm going to die. I thought, I thought it was gone. On 60 Minutes. You know, I didn't want to cancel. It's against your religion to cancel. I don't want to let people down. From screaming out songs. How sick were you on stage that night? I don't know how I got through it. To screaming in pain. What is the prognosis if untreated? Oh, it's, it's fatal. How this rock legend. Wow. Dodged death. I'm coming back. <laughs>